And um, we're going to uh, talk a bit about the new record that Tori has out. It's called Boys for Pele. And um, what I do want to talk about is this record, you wrote a lot of the songs while you were out on tour for this record on your last tour. Um, and producing it yourself this time around, after the split between you and Eric, I mean, you know, he was, you know, not only a you know, personal partner, but he was also really involved in the production of the music. How was that different this time for you? Um. Well, there were times when I got a little scared, but there were times when um, I would just look at that harpsichord and I'd look at that piano, and uh, they'd say, come on, baby, give us some hands. I'd say, all right, then. I know how to do this. I think I've known what I hear in my head. It's been there for 30 years, and there were things that uh, I haven't tried before that I really had to try. Right, and because there's someone looking over your shoulder tell you this is how you do it, so you can push it to your own limits? Yeah, I, I mean, always my other records have been collaborative, and they were great to make. But when you're kind of on your own, it's like being in a Formula One race car, and you're just behind there by yourself, and you're going, I'm just going to put this pedal down. And you're in total control, right? Well, even if you're sliding on the uh, asphalt, asphalt, um, <laughs> There's something very exciting about it because you just don't know where you're going to go, and I was and I was willing to go wherever that was. Yeah. And you've taken it there, and we're going to get into some of the songs in a little bit too, because some great subject matter there and intensity. So I want to talk about those. Right now, though, I hate to break away from Tori because she's compelling. There's no question about it. But right now, we're going to play a video from a Swedish trio called Saul. Tori, you know, there's a new album. Let's talk a bit about the title, Boys for Pele, mm. the Volcano Goddess. Yes. Tell me a bit about why you decided to call the album that. And because there's a lot of different things and images you can conjure up of, you know, boys for Pele. Yeah. Sac offering the sacrifice of men for the volcanic goddess. I mean, there's a lot well, of I, I did consider it, actually, man. You know, there were moments where just pushing them in did enter my mind. But um, I think that's normal. I think when you're hurt and things are falling apart um, and you're having to change what you thought was going to be your life for the rest of your life. There, there are things that happen, um, well, for me anyway, inside myself. And this whole record is a transformation. There, there is, you know, there's the blood and guts. I'm a little vampire after my boy's blood. And then uh, there's a bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I have to do my yeah. kiss. Yeah. Your impression. Oh, Gene Simmons talk. Yeah, a little talk. bit of that. And that's what happens. That's how I make a good soup. There are all these different sides. And Pele represented fire, and I was trying desperately to find my own fire here instead of um, needing to take it from the men in my life for whatever reason. I, I thought I needed to, not as a musician, but for my woman's worth. My worth as, as a woman was intrinsically tied with how the men in my life saw that. Right. And speaking of which, um, I mean, there are different images on the album. We're going to get into talking about more about the lyrics and when we come back, because there's some things I, I want to ask you about. Maybe you can shed some light for me. I want to just also say real quick, I know we're going to have to break again because of it, all these quick segments, but seeing you live um, is always a really personal, compelling experience. And I can say that from uh, your fans' point of view to my own, seeing you, you really don't draw people in. It's just a real personal thing. You could be like in the last row, and you're still feeling, you're just feeling all the energies that are coming out of you live when you perform. Um, well, what we talked about before, you and me. Before we got on camera. Yeah, which is, I'm so shy around the camera. Um, the live shows are really like, I try and make them like a fire ceremony, so that when people come, they bring their demons, and they bring what's hidden in their unconscious, and it's a safe place. They're not going to get defecated on. It's a place where we're all um, letting them be alive. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things coming out. And it's just, we're going to get into more into that later. It's great, though. Stick around. We'll be talking more with Tori, of course, and she'll be performing live a little later. And her voice will sound much better than mine does right now. It's well, let's hope. <laughs> it definitely will. Sure it will. After the break, we're going to show her your, her brand new video. First, here's a look at the top ten singles this week at Alternative Radio. Motion in your voice and the 
vocals of your songs. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield. Sitting next to me is, of course, Tori Amos. And Tori, let's talk about the songs on the new record, some of them. Um, I, I, Father Lucifer is one track. Uh, there's, it's interesting because when you talk about looking and exploring a dark side of life or dark things in your life, people immediately would always think of a reference to what they think uh, is Satan or Satanic, mm. um, as opposed to just exploring. Where were you going with that in the lyrics when you're talking about um, the sanity of Lucifer? Well, first of all, the album is really a novel, and it's the descent that this um, red-headed girl kind of right. takes, right, to claim her womanhood. And um, the whole idea that there are things that have been hidden, and I really had to go and visit Lucifer to get my talisman so that I could go and find the Black Widow, so I could go find these parts. It's funny because if you think about, in truth, Christianity, it never passed down a blueprint of the Mary Magdalene. There was the Virgin, there was the Divine Mother, but where was the woman? The woman, just on her own, passion, compassion, wisdom, claiming that dark side, the light side, the shadow, whole, no, there wasn't that passed down. Um, and so I went back to reclaim some of those sides. And uh, Lucifer, I had a nice little cup of tea with him. Right. And speaking of uh, the religious side of things, Mohammed, my friend, there's a reference to a female, a female God or female Jesus or female... The female side of God. The female side yeah. of God, which is, which is kind of like you, you're asking the lyrics to kind of own up and admit, as opposed to where I'm a God, you know, on the last record, you're talking a bit about, I always felt that it was interesting, you said you need a woman to look after you, yeah. you know, so you can take care of business correctly, I always thought that reference was really interesting. How would you say, you know, talk about the two, two different issues on both songs? Um, well, I was going after the Christian God in God, because that's definitely patriarchal. I mean, he is a he in Christianity, right. yes. And uh, Muhammad, my friend, all the religions, you know, they've got the men um, as the prophets, no differently than the creative forces, the Da Vinci's, the Mozart's, the Newton's. It's always come through the men, and the women have been the muses, or the mothers, or whatever, or carried the prophets. And I just said, you know, this is what, to me, the Holy Grail was. People were looking for the female part of God, the vessel, the womb. In truth, many scholars believe that I've been reading quite a bit. And um, I said, you know, I had a cup of tea with Lucifer. I need to go have a cup of tea now with Muhammad. And uh, we, we've got to get this female thing happening in balance. We like the guys. Guys are good. But that's not all there is, you know. Right, absolutely not. Now, we're going to play the new video for Cordelette Sneeze. Now, um, people have been talking about, you know, or I've read, that there's references in there to Trent Reznor, who you worked on with Path the Mission, and there's a line in there about made my own pretty hate machine mm. in the lyric as well. Do you want to can you do you want to elaborate on that at all, or would you rather not? I think you know my work speaks for itself. I let people discover what they want in it. Right. Um, I've had some wonderful friends influence me, and uh, they show up in the record. Yeah, I, I hear that. I can totally find. I can hear that lyrics and the songs. We're going to play that first video off the new album right now, Boys for Pele. It's called Caught Light Sneeze. Here it is on 120 Minutes.